person responsible uh, for our young students to get half fare in the buses all over Goa. I think this is something remarkable. Nothing similar is there uh, visible in any part of India, if I am right, <coughs> Dr. Subodh. I think he was a pioneer in that along with a number of other eminent uh, activists at that point of time. So I, he, as an activist, he as a political, uh, politically sensitive person, he as a socially sensitive person, is uh, much better you will be able to see his works which are more politically sensitive and uh, socially sensitive. Uh, I don't require to go on and on. I would like to say that his political sensitivity and social sensitivity which was seen in cartoons, he had in between left that to draw and paint realistic landscapes and own life and then came back with a, with a force that you could see that same sensitivity in his installations. His installations speak about politics, his installations speak about social disparities and social ills. Especially he has talk, talked about communalism in his, uh, in his installation that he had done, which I think had a divine intervention personally. Even though Dr. Subodh is, a, is an atheist, at he, there was a divine intervention because one of his installations which showed 2611 in the most glaring way had uh, all of a sudden a uh, bull coming in yes. to visit his uh, installation. It, it became a part of that installation and bull is, uh, is a symbol of Yama, is a vehicle of uh, Yama. So I think it was an apt way of saying that gods are looking at him. Uh, I will say gods because we in, in India are uh, polytheists. So gods are looking at him. Uh, in that sense, politics, religion, social life, and art all mixed into Subodh's work and Subodh himself. He is the best person to talk about. I welcome Dr. Subodh Kirkar. Well, uh, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, it's my normally a custom. Whenever I talk about my work, I like to pay my respects to my father. My father was a very close friend of mine. He passed away four years ago. And from the age of six to 16, perhaps he was my only teacher. He was an artist and a school teacher. So I'll begin with a little installation I did to celebrate my father, our relationship. We walked every day for at least two hours from the age of six to 16 on the beach. And that, those were the walks which actually made me fall in love with the ocean and become perhaps a land artist. I will give you a little bit a brief introduction to uh, what my land art is about. Uh, I will start with a few of my works which I did. This is my first installation where I just went to the seashore and dug a crater in the sand and covered it with a large lamp in copper which I had actually, actually made and I call it the tenth planet. This is all of us as children make uh, cones. Cone is perhaps the first sculpture every child makes. And so this is a memory of the cones which I made as a child. Throughout the history of uh, land art, throughout the history of landscape, landscape is something uh, which, in which you sacrificed uh, politics in the service of the decorative and the picture skew. So when you see a constable's work or any other landscape, you don't see politics in it. I do exactly the opposite. I infuse the landscape with politics. I use the landscape as a canvas to put forth some of my political and social ideas. So the food habit of the whole continent, I mean almost uh, uh, whole India and many other countries, was changed by the Portuguese uh, with this uh, import of plants. For example, mangoes. We had mangoes in India, but if the most popular varieties of mangoes today in India are basically uh, they were grafted by the Portuguese. That's why the names are Alfonso, Mangelal, Mancurat, these are all Portuguese names. They are basically names of the Jesuits, uh, botanists who did the grafting. Uh, so I decided to take a kind of a poetic revenge. So I was invited to do an installation in Lisbon where there's a garden called the Tapada das Necessidades, which means the Garden of Necessities. This garden is next to the foreign ministry in Lisbon and this garden has been existing for 600 years, unchanged. 
right from Vasco da Gama onwards, everybody who went out to sail on their voyages had to go and pray in a little chapel in this garden, the Pada das Nasasadadas. And so, uh, the government had decided, the municipality of Lisbon decided to do some changes in this garden. And there were six artists invited, and I was one of them. And I decided to take a poetic revenge. So I took the rice seeds from Goa, the local rice seeds, and planted them in the garden in Lisbon, tracing the root of Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama came from Lisbon, went almost to uh, the San Anna Island, and almost went near Brazil, then came to the Cape of Good Hope, and then Zanzibar, and then came to Calicut. So it is a very, very interesting route, and I traced that route using rice seeds in Lisbon. So when my rice grew, it was not just growing rice, but it was, uh, it was basically sprouting history. So these are my... Uh, and then I had uh, some kind of flags, which were the dingy in which the terrorists came, became some kind of targa, the targa of death. They all like this from Kala Academy. They did a fantastic performance. And we had created uh, the, the guns with fiberglass. And this is one of my favorite works. Uh, well, when the partition of India happened, apart from, apart from uh, millions of people who lost their life. It's another very paradoxical thing happened. But this was a project I did in uh, Dubai. Uh, the Arabian countries and India have had a long relationship, especially uh, the trade relationship. This date back, I think, with, with, to the Mohenjo-Doro time, uh, because we had ships coming from Arabia into India. And so, when I was asked to do an installation there, first I went and visited a site, and this was a site which was given to me next to the Burj Arab. Now, to do something next to Burj Arab is a, I mean, a very difficult task because you have to do something which has to complement it. The bug of activism is very much there. The kiras ki paiji, <laughs> that is there, so I express it in different ways. So I would not say which is better, which is... But especially if I am able to do this idea of uh, sculpture in India and Pakistan, I think uh, that will be my favorite because uh, that is something which you are making a statement forever. I would like to add that I was have, I had the pleasure of having long conversations yeah, with Subodh, and I once asked him how how do you think about what do you think about other artists? He said you should focus about focus on yourselves rather than thinking about what others are doing, rather than criticizing others. And that thing I think is the core of what Subodh is doing, and that is talking about politics and leaving away from politics, just commenting on it so that rest can take a cue out of it. It was nice having you all here. Thanks a lot. Thank you.